All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. We've got some Harry Potter trading card game action tonight. It is Tuesday night. It's Harry Potter night. It's dueling night, as it were. And we already have the players jumped into the game. We're a little bit late, so we're just going to go ahead and get right in there. And it looks like we have got Donovan up top versus Sammy on the bottom. So let's games up. All right, let's take a peek at what we've got here. It looks like Sammy is playing a <clears throat> Albus Dumbledore potions list. This is interesting. This might be um, that potions list that he was sharing in the Facebook group. It's going to be cool to see how this works. And then we have uh, Madame Pomfrey here as the starting character for Donovan. Looks like he is playing a, uh, a Charms and Creatures deck that is using uh, the spiders. And this also looks like a list I've seen posted recently, I feel like, um, because I noticed the old stock. And it looks like we are going to play Holidays with Hags. I've gotten, we're already seeing a lot of new revival cards. Uh, actually, all the items and creatures in play so far are revival cards. Um, this is one of the series of Guild Wars Lockhart's books. I loved the flavor on these cards that they created for this revival set. Um, and of course, this says you can use the action to discard the card from play. And if you do, put two lessons of the same type from your discard pile into play. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, it, it is two actions for like two lessons, but it's cool because you can uh, put two different you know, non potions lessons into play. Um, and this provides you all that like kind of item economy and stuff like that. If you're taking advantage of items. Another nice thing about that is, um, especially since, you know, the high end potions uh, spells are going to require us to get rid of a lot of these lessons. It's going to be nice to be able to put two of them back onto the table. Kind of invest those actions now because we know we're going to be getting rid of those lessons later. Alright guys. This week's stream is brought to you by... This new Mountain Dew Watermelon flavor. I haven't tried this yet. You guys are going to get this live reaction on stream. I know this isn't the content you came here for, but it's what you're getting. I was told I need to pick this up on my way home. Wow, okay, that is fantastic. Wow. Oh, that's really good. Okay. Anyway, back to the game. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't want to waste too much time on that. Uh, all right, looks like we are, uh, are we indicating that we're using Dumbledore here? He just, uh, reduces the cost of spells. Uh, Dumbledore Suspension. I didn't even notice that this came down. This is one of the new adventures. Um, this is, you can only play it if you have at least four lessons in play. So it's one of the few adventures that has that kind of restriction on it. Uh, it's effective so that your opponent's starting character loses all their abilities, um, and to solve it, your opponent has to skip three actions. Uh, the reward is that the uh, their next spell needs two less power, which is kind of funny because he's already reducing uh, the power that his spells need. So he's probably already like locked in on as much power as he'll need. So that effect isn't really going to benefit him. And that's how we see the best adventures always work, right? Where the effect that they get for solving it is like barely even a reward. Um... It looks like we did skip one action into that because we want to get the Albus uh, ability back. Obviously, the whole deck is built around kind of playing those spells for two cheaper. Meanwhile, these uh, Acromantulas are just going to keep bopping away, punching Sammy in the face. And creatures are just a really interesting piece of inevitability. Um, you know, they're just going to sit there and keep ticking that clock down further and further. Hmm. Potions dungeon isn't a location you see too often. Um, whenever a potion lesson is put into the discard, it goes back to the hand instead. Uh, so potions dungeon makes sure that you always have those potions lessons available to replay so that you can take advantage of those spells that we were mentioning earlier that uh, get rid of a lot of the potion lessons that you have in play. Uh, one specifically that we're definitely going to see since this is a revival event 
is uh, Cauldron Calamity, which is the new potions burn spell. It's a new top end burn spell they created that is going to deal two damage, I believe, for each potion lesson that you choose to discard. Um, so we're looking at what 10 damage already on the field. Potential to put two more lessons in, so that's uh, 12 damage. Nothing too crazy, but it's uh, it's going to be what we do to win. If we get there. It looks like we skipped. Looks like we skipped all the actions we needed to to get rid of that. Um, and the one thing about that too is since it's skipping actions, you do want to skip uh, only the first action, right? Because is it this turn? The next spell your opponent plays. Oh no, wow, that is a, uh, that's a persisting effect, right? The next spell your opponent plays needs two less power, so it doesn't have to be this turn. That can be whenever. What's this one going to be? Ooh, Fatiguing Potion. Looks like Ron's getting sleepy. To play Fatiguing Potion, you return one of your potion lessons from play to your hand. The funny thing is, even if that said discard it, uh, Potion's Dungeon's making us return it to our hand anyway. Uh, it's going to be 9 damage to an opponent or creature of our choice. So this is really where we start to see the, uh, the Albus Dumbledore deck shine, right? Because we're doing this way before 8 damage. Uh, and the funny thing is we even had it reduced by two more. So this only cost four really, although we were able to pay for it at it on a six. Damn, this watermelon Mountain Dew is good, dude. Major melon, this is dangerous. Okay, Donovan is going to reply by just slamming down even more lessons. And wow, Aragog! This is the first Aragog we've seen. We've actually seen the spider deck, but I don't know that Aragog has ever come down. Um, so, of course, Aragog is the payoff for playing all these spiders in your deck here in the new Revival Spiders creature style. And uh, Aragog is going to make you discard one of your creature lessons from play, as all the big creatures do. And whenever another one of your spiders deals damage, it does two more damage. So, all of a sudden, uh, this is going to just be real, real scary. You know, Aragog's doing four damage, and both of these guys are doing two damage. So that's we just went from dealing two damage a turn to dealing six damage a turn, eight damage a turn. Sorry, I can't add. Math is hard. And eight damage a turn from the creatures without using any actions in addition is going to start uh, matching what Sammy is able to do with his spells. So here, Dragon's Blood, we're coming down from seven. Um, we might be killing Aragog with this one, or the face. I don't know. To me, I think the face is the place. I think that um, the only way you win is by outburning him. You're not going to win. Like, you don't have the time to win by trying to, like, kill his creatures. Um, so I think you just Dragon's Blood him in the face. You're going to deal 11 damage. Oh, it looks like we opted to kill Aragog. I mean, it does take the damage to turn down from 8 to 2. I just think that... Uh, I don't know how much time we have to get more of those like lessons down to get those big spells out out of living death that's another one yeah man look at this. this is so cool you can play all the top end like the super high end potions cards and since it's revival you usually assume your opponent and you are gonna kind of give each other time to uh to build up it's just a teeny bit you know it's not as crazy like you're not like locking people turn one right you have some time to establish your potions and your creatures you know that like albus is going to actually be able to start slinging these high high cost potions cards pretty early and there's not going to be a whole lot standing in his way there so these guys are kind of just racing each other for damage to the face um i don't know if donovan has much that he can do to stop any any part of sammy's plan but sammy does have the option to use those burn spells on the creatures the funny thing is he kind of opted for all of like the biggest craziest burn spells so it feels like a little bit of overkill on the spider sometimes i mean i think even the aragog we uh we overkilled by like yeah by three damage
feels a little bad not getting not squeezing all 11 points of damage out of that card. But we'll see. Killing the Aragog might have been worth. Might have given us enough time to play down the lessons again. Might have kind of been neutral, although I think it was a little bit minus. We'll see. We'll see. Because what you really want to do if you're Sammy is you want to hit with like two more of those. You know, like hit him for 11 and imagine he's down to, uh, to 20 right now. You just want to hit him with like two more burn spells. You figure that you can crack that book and put two spells into play so you can play like the six and the seven cost things. Oh, this is going to be Ro uh, Halloween Feast. Oh my goodness, I need to read this one. Put up to four creature cards from your discard pile into your hand. That's nice. It gives you a little bit of uh, action. This is like the uh, end of year feast. This is for adventures. All the different feast cards just let you go get some things from your discard pile. It makes sure that you're going to have four relevant actions to use for the next couple turns. Looks like we are going to get back Aragog and Forest Spider. You thought you had taken care of Aragog? Well, all we need is one more lesson and she's back. And then, of course, Forest Spider here is another one of the new revival cards. You love it. You love seeing all the revival stuff in the spider deck working so well together. Um, and Aragog, sorry, Aragog, Forest Spider, of course, is uh, going to cost one less for each spider in play. And Giant Tarantula, maybe the best spider of them all. Uh, just absolutely insane to deal two damage a turn for one uh, creature lesson. Uh, and the Aragog is going to put those up to, to three. And we do have a full suite of four spiders in the discard pile. That is one of the benefits of our opponent damaging us so much is that any of the cards we have that interact with the discard pile um, have so many more choices. And that is actually why cards in Harry Potter are just so strong at interacting with your discard pile. Because any game, in any game, where you can use a card that lets you use your discard pile as an extension of your hand, that's very strong, you know, any kind of recursion. But in Harry Potter, any... Uh, any steps your opponent takes towards winning the game are always like dealing you damage and putting more cards in that discard pile. So the closer your opponent gets to winning, uh, the better any of your cards that work out of the discard pile get, right? So it's kind of cool because they just are really strong late game and they can help you rubber band back quite a bit. So, uh, oh man, I, I'm not drawing enough creatures. I'm not drawing enough spiders, but because I've taken this damage... Pop! Now I've drawn four spiders. All right, cool. Now we can get to, uh, you know, the next two or three turns... We're just going to keep dropping the spiders on the table. It's exactly the kind of pressure you want to keep up, especially with Aragog coming down. So this is going to be Sammy plays a potion, and now he's using Alahasti Drought. That's going to be six damage or getting rid of an item. There's no reason to get rid of Old Sox, so we're just going to do six damage to the face there. Right? What is... Uh... What is the pixie doing? Oh, okay. It was just a uh, part of the damage she was taking, I think. And then Sammy's taking uh, five damage, right? It's three from this guy, yeah. Five damage from the forest spider and the, the two babies. But yeah, I was going to say, uh, Donovan's just waiting for a turn where he finds another lesson, and there's Aragog. So remember, Aragog is buffing all the spiders, so Aragog's going to make all of them do one more damage. So, or sorry, two more damage. Um, so this is going from one to three, three to five, two to four. be nine... Jeez, man, it's, it's getting a little scary. 15 damage. You only can survive two more turns of that, so Sammy is going to have to start to... thinking about burning these creatures, but again... imagine that he had taken... he had taken another 6 damage, right? So we'd be down to 17. But we had dealt that 11 damage to Donovan, right? Donovan would be down to... oh, goodness... 13 cards and that's a uh, all of a sudden it feels like we can win this right we would have like look at his hand he's got to have the burn spells for that i mean we have one two three four potions and you can slam two more in right so that's six that's 12 yeah so actually cauldron calamity wins us the game if we had gone face 
with the burn spell. This is an important lesson actually for uh, for people at home. Oh, I realized I never even put the names up. There you go. Now you know who's who, but you can see it on the screen. Um, this is a great learning opportunity here. If you are, and this is any game, trades are so tough, right? Like you see your opponent doing something scary and you have a card that can stop it or you can hit your opponent in the face to deal damage. Uh, and I think you have to think about instead of that turn right there, you have to think, man, how am I going to win this game? What does winning this game look like, right? Winning this game for Sammy always looks like dealing his opponent lethal damage with a burn spell every time. It's not deck your opponent out. It's not slow your opponent down. It's hit your opponent in the face with burn spells, right? So hitting our opponent in the face with burn spells being our game plan. It's like if we kill this Aragog and, you know, he plays more creatures he's he already has these other three creatures they're hitting us we're already behind on the damage race my spells are bigger than his creatures so i have to lean into what i'm good at i have to lean into my advantage and you want to just almost always it's like face hunter if you ever played hearthstone or red deck wins if you play magic just face 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 is the place and i think sammy would be really really close to uh to like one shotting him right here although he might be getting close with the Cauldron Calamity. You know, he's got six. So this is 12 damage if he pops it. But he doesn't want to do that because it gets rid of all of his lessons in play. Or rather, it puts them all back to his hand, but still. Uh, and he's not able to use any other spells. So he can really only do it when it's the kill. So uh, right now, he wants to use a small burn spell. I don't know if he's got any small burn spells, though. And he's going to take <clears throat> some damage there. Uh, Donovan, use, <laughs> use Pomfrey right now. Like, you have the out. Uh, you have to turn your Pomfrey sideways, please. Please heal 12. Don't let this man do this to you. It's so telegraphed. It's the most telegraphed thing I've ever seen. Please heal. Or do we just have enough burn to kill him? What do we have? Bluebell flames? Or stream of flames? Sorry. Stream of flames? That's, that's hardly... Alright, let's see it. Pomfrey. We're playing a giant tarantula. Okay, okay. Those are our two actions. So we did three damage, and now we're threatening another three with our tarantula. And before we pass the turn, we better Pomfrey. Oh my god, we didn't! Why? Why didn't we use her? We didn't use Madame Pomfrey's ability. If Sammy plays a lesson... Oh uh, no, maybe... Wait, you know, he doesn't need to play a lesson. He could just have two burn spells here. Yeah, oh my god. Alright, Drought of Living Death and then Cauldron Calamity, watch. So Drought of Living Death, 12 to the face. Cauldron Calamity. Wow, we had, Donovan had this game. We just had to use our starting hero power. Uh, Madam Pomfrey here can heal 12 cards. Yeah, so there is Cauldron Calamity, right? So Cauldron Calamity is going to discard the rest of these and deal another 8 damage. So that's going to be game. Donovan, Donovan, we had this one. We had it, you were so close. You didn't respect... The telegraphed cauldron calamity now you see it though right now you know so for the next game you don't walk into that uh i think you use your palm free earlier but yeah I, I you don't even flirt with lethal when you have this as your starting character or on the field right or like a snape a madam palm free as soon as you get to like half of your deck is gone use this card and what are you waiting for right there's not gonna be a better time to heal That's tough. We're probably like mathing out right now. Like, oh man, look, I had this. I could have healed. I didn't think you were going to do that much damage. I'm sure that's exactly what conversation is happening. All right, so now we go into game two. Now Donovan knows what's going on. He knows, okay, I'm going to get hit in the face with a bunch of these bird spells. If I'm Donovan, honestly, uh, my job is to get the giant tarantulas on the field as fast as possible and then just figure out the rest. Like, but you want creature pressure as soon as you can. Also drop a, uh, drop Dumbledore's suspension a little bit later in the game and I think that can actually do a lot of damage. Specifically to Dumbledore, <laughs> funnily enough. Maybe we need another uh, flavor article. 
talk about how Dumbledore's suspension just <laughs> shuts down Dumbledore. All right. So Sammy won that game, so I believe Donovan is on the play here. This time, I'm sure we will see Madame Pomfrey get used, and we'll we'll probably see it get used pretty early too. Um, two charismatical creatures lessons and pass the turn. What's interesting to me is Pomfrey as a starting character doesn't offer like any benefit besides longevity, right? Extending your health pool by twelve points. Um. So you definitely want to just tap that a lot sooner. Basically played the whole game without a starting character. You know, it's, that's the, uh, you're tying weights to your ankles. It's a crazy disadvantage. All right. So we did get down uh, our third. We got our baby Acromantula is going to go ahead and search the deck for another baby Acromantula. It's a really cool thing that this card does. Um, you know, it's not a super powerful creature itself, just a one, one. But you can buff it with the spider stuff, and it searches for more spiders, and you have all those things that want you to have more spiders, and it just increases your spider count. So all the baby acromantulas and an and Aragog comes down, and all of a sudden you're getting overwhelmed by spiders. The one thing I have to note about this card, the art on this card is so phenomenal. First of all, there's multiple baby acromantulas out together which is exactly what's going to happen on the field. But I also just love how Aragog is just looming in the background. Very tasteful. In fact, I think uh, out of all the revival cards, my favorite art on the new cards is probably the, the baby Acromantula and like the Aragog. I think that guy did Aragog's Lair too, right? Who's the artist here? Peter. Very well done, Peter. And it looks like a Copper Cauldron, man. All right, Copper Cauldron is the just like a nice, fair acceleration card. Um, it returns one of your potion lessons to your hand and just gives you two potion lessons instead. Um, the best cauldron in the game by a mile is Self-Stirring Cauldron. Uh, it turns two potions into four potions. It gives you the action back. But they all have like an acceleration kind of thing. Uh, I could see that maybe you don't want to um, have to wait to four to accelerate, right? So now you get to these cauldrons and all of a sudden we're playing like double lessons. They are susceptible to things that remove your items, but we saw that the coast was pretty clear on that stuff in game one. Donovan's not playing any kind of item hate. Uh, I don't know how many cards these guys watch each other's sideboard in, but there's not a ton of great item hate in the colors Donovan's playing, so I'd be surprised if he... Uh, went out of his way to attack the cauldrons of the books that he saw Sammy playing. If anything, I would have put in a... <laughs> I was about to say another Pomfrey. Uh, like, put you know, some healing cards. I don't even mean that to throw shade at him when I say another Pomfrey, but... Um, but really, that's what we like to... When we make decks, we like to sideboard the uh, Pomfreys. You know, like, you, you have one main deck and you sideboard another... Pomfrey, and then you sideboard like three Snapes. Uh, because if they're starting Snape, you don't want Snape in your deck. But otherwise, you know, the lesson and the heal is just so strong. So strong. And if you know that the coast is clear, man, that healing is uh, very valuable in this game. Basilisk Fang. That's cool. Let's pull that one up real quick. Uh, so this is another new revival item. Uh, when you play this card, you do two damage to the opponent or a creature, and you can use an action to discard the card from play uh, to get rid of an item. So it's kind of like this cool little like twofer. Um, it also has the added benefits of being like a higher cost item for things like Arthur Weasley to deal damage. Uh, Basilisk Fang is going to be cool though. Uh, Sammy's probably a little upset he didn't get to draw it. It might have been one of the cards he sided in. Definitely good against these little low to the ground creatures. Um, yeah, now we've got our third, fourth Acromantula down, and Forest Spider only costing four. So yeah, now this is seven damage a turn without any buffs on the spiders. Uh, more than 10% of Sammy's deck every turn, so he's going to have to do something about it pretty quick. And again, like we said, uh, a lot of his... He's playing like the high, high-end burn stuff because Albus is making things cheaper. Not running so much of the low to mid burn spells. And Potions does have that nasty drawback on most of their burn spells. 
where you have to get rid of lessons. So it ends up like a spell ends up actually costing you two actions to do like a small amount of burn. Potions dungeon. Yep. Gonna go ahead and get our location into play, although this isn't really doing too much for us right now. This feels more like a neutral play. Like a don't have a better play kind of play. Just because, I mean, we're already at so many potions less. Oh, we're going for a mid-game Calamity. I mean, that's fine, right? Um, does Cauldron Calamity let you do it to a creature, too? Oh, you clever designers. Of course it does. Uh, so you can do two damage to an opponent or a creature. So you can trade lessons for baby Acromantulas. That's pretty clever. We're going to trade four for four. No, we're going to trade uh, two of them into the big spider. And we are going to trade all of our lessons away, though. Wow. All right, that's pretty cool. So, earlier, when I was saying that he didn't have any little burns, I knew that Cauldron Calamity cost three, but for some reason I thought Cauldron Calamity was only to the face. That's cool, it does uh, also hit the creatures. It's very, very well designed. Makes that card much better. Uh, Aragog's Lair. This is that card we were talking about. Also done by that same artist. Excellent card. It is a four cost location that gives all your spiders two more health and boy oh boy i bet donovan is laughing about how he had this in his hand and this is like a turn late right because that would have really really helped make that cauldron calamity awkward but we have it for next time all right potion potion And that's going to be the turn. You know, we're just reestablishing those lessons. Taking small spider damage is going to be dragon poison times two. All those dragon poisons. They're a little pricey, though. So we played a Halloween feast, and we went and got back all the spiders that Sammy just killed with his uh, with his cauldron calamity. Look at these guys! Look at this nice little back and forth. Those cauldrons are pulling a lot of weight for Sammy, just having um, having the power he needs to cast his spells, but they don't help when it comes to having to sacrifice potions lessons to effects of spells. There's one drawback with items that generate lessons, especially in potions. Uh, but the creators knew what they were doing when they made those cauldron cards. That's exactly why they did that. All right, we've got another baby acromantula comes down and the forest spider comes down and things are starting to look pretty grim um, because Aragog's lair is stopping Sammy from clearing the board like he did last time. So it looks like both of these players have built up to exactly where we were before the Cauldron Calamity, but the difference is that uh, Donovan is riding high with all of these spiders with increased health. Uh, so Dragon Poison coming down uh, for Sammy. This is going to deal 10 damage to opponent or creature. And again, remember, um, I think it has to be the face here. I don't think the far spider is enough. Even though Sammy did win the last game, he did not win the last game because of that decision. Right? He won the last game because his opponent uh, did not heal with uh, Humphrey. Donovan had it 100%.
Oh no, you're listening to me commentate your game? Oh no. Mute stream. <laughs> it's okay. I, it's my fault. I should put a delay on it or something. In the in my other Discord, we I uh, I make it a big deal, you know, if people are are tuned in because we we go deep on talking about the lines of play. Although I can't see your hands, so maybe that's not so bad, right? It's just like uh, it's like having someone standing on your shoulder. But let's see. The neat thing about the spider artwork: the artist went back and reread the Aragog chapter for inspiration, and then drew the series of cards. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think that they are. They're gorgeous. They're really cool. To me, they're um, they're like really in line with what I imagine artwork from the other sets would look like. Like specifically, these are really cool. This guy too, or a spider. A lot of gorgeous artwork. I don't know. There's much of it that I dislike. I'm a sucker for card art, though. Oh, excuse me. Oh, man, there's going to be another forest spider. And uh, Sammy is looking for a car to climb into to speed on out of this situation here. This is another thing to think about here, right? It's like, okay, so how much damage did we prevent uh, when we killed the spiders? Quite a bit, right? It's been like two or three turns. Oh, there's the Pomfrey. We're not missing it this turn. I was going to say, but he is in that like kill range. But no, Sammy did the right thing clearing the monsters because of this Pomfrey, right? Um, because this Pomfrey is going to heal up past the point where uh, we would have won the race if we didn't kill the creatures. Unfortunately, he drew, or he, whether or not he drew into her or had it in his hand is irrelevant, but he plays, very smartly plays Halloween Feast to make sure that he gets the uh, the spiders always out, make sure that there's always a lot of them. Uh, I really like the Halloween Feast card in Donovan's list. I think that it really improves his consistency and makes sure that he's able to always have those like high impact creature plays and uses his actions efficiently. Uh, one thing that we'll say for both of these players is that both of them are using their actions very efficiently. We have seen very few use an action draw card type situations here. Uh, which is always a good sign of a well-oiled deck that flows well and has a lot of cross synergy. Always nice. Both of these players are no slouch, uh, especially Sammy, been around the revival scene, been around the Harry Potter scene for a long time. I don't know how long Donovan's been around the Harry Potter scene, uh, not to take anything away from them. I know they've been playing in these games uh, every week, though, whether it's this format or classic. Donovan is a grinder, one of our uh, regulars here in the Wizarding Wars. Sammy is regular as well for the uh, revival events, always uh, showing us these cool decks that these guys thought up when they were designing the set. It's also nice to see things that are kind of uh, just a different angle. So like last week we were celebrating how Stefan was doing Through the Flu with Snuffling Potion. That was a really cool combo we haven't really watched much of. Haven't seen many games of. Um, here we're seeing Sammy apply a lot of the new potions cards really, really effectively. Especially Cauldron Calamity really getting a showcase here. I mean this is, after all, a Cauldron Calamity deck, is it not? Among other things, but of course I, I'm sure the point is to help it shine here. Um, and I think we're doing a good job doing just that. So this looks like a fairly simple, slow start. Like I said, you know, this is a pretty typical in the lower adventure games, you know, or lower character games as well. Just less and less in as the ideal turn one. Um, and that's Harry Potter TCG across the board. I mean, your ideal turn ones are either less and less in uh, in aggressive low curve creature decks, uh, ideal turn one can actually be uh, less than giant tarantula. Um, in you know any you know utility character is a perfect turn one. So like ease, quarrel, palm free, uh, any of the starting characters that has the lesson is a splash. You know Snape, McGonagall, um, Seamus, 
Filch, all those cards, great turn one cards. Um, there's a few adventures, but there's not too many adventures I would want to drop that fast. Turn one uh, blind, not knowing what my opponent's doing, but Hagrid needs help is a perfect one. Ooh, Hagrid needs help is such a good. Just start your opponent down eight cards of their deck. Well, probably 11 cards because they'll have to draw. So strong. And if you follow up a Hagrid needs help with a Hagrid needs help, who boy does Hagrid need a lot of help? All right, Donovan off to the races here. Uh, it looks like Donovan had a less and less and follow up, and then Sammy might have had a draw two cards turn. Now we have a less and less and from Donovan on turn three. Sammy gets a uh, lesson, then Cauldron finally coming out, accelerate him up to four, make up for some of that lost time last turn. Maybe I jinxed it by saying we hadn't had any turns where we were really just drawing cards, but Sammy doesn't mind sculpting the hand, having this nice big hand um to hold the big burn spells as he sets up and the old sock coming down for donovan uh i've said my piece on this card we actually did a card of the day on this card on darkmarktcg.com but uh this is uh there's no reason to play this card and unless you're trying to prove a point right i played old sock and i didn't drop a game nice cornish pixie this is a really cool card so cornish pixie is going to come down um sammy's going to show donovan his hand and Cornish Pixie gets to take a card and kind of uh, snatch it away. Just hold on to it until Cornish Pixie leaves the field. Uh, but Sammy does have some ways to kill the Cornish Pixie here. So you don't want it to be anything that's uh, really good for him to get back at instant speed. Although you're not really disrupting his hand. So really, uh, it's a moot point. Uh, you want to take something that uh, if there's a Cauldron Calamity in the hand, you probably take that. Uh, you want him to have as few of those as possible so you can set up your creature safely. A tough choice, though, because Sammy's rocking, what, like 12 cards in his hand? Yeah, it looks like 12. Oh, it looks like we are taking the uh, dragon poison. Interesting. Dragon Poison is just the old 10 burn. Potion. Potions. Potions. Coming down for Dumbledore. Dumbledore trying his hand at potions class. Maybe covering for Snape. Who knows? Maybe this is just a hobby of his. Oh, pep talk. I don't know if uh, the best deck to play pep talk against. This man's got nothing but high cards. Uh, although he must not have any in his hand right now, right? There's no way that you corners Pixie see the whole hand and then drop pep talk when he's sitting there with uh, with one of the... Yeah, but <laughs> I was going to say, he's got so many of them. Yeah, well, here's a drought of living death. Uh, so we'll get rid of pep talk and... Uh, basically, Pep Talk was uh, sacrificing two actions to take one action away from Sammy. In that instance, I, I would have rather seen us draw two cards if we really didn't have anything to do. Um, Sammy playing Potion Dungeon just to help make sure he always has those lessons. Uh, Potion Dungeon gets you in some deep trouble if people are playing um, things that care about how big your hand is. Is this a May? No, it's not. Okay. Interesting. I mean, obviously his opponent's not doing any of that stuff. I'm just thinking of potential drawbacks to returning the lessons to your hand, since you can't just drop them back down. It's not like a Blastoise rain dance situation, you know? For the two people who watch this who enjoy that reference. I got you. That'd be sick, though. Where's our, like, rain dance style effect? Other than... It's all being caught by Snape. I guess that, uh, that is the effect, and I, I should stop asking for it. Right, it already exists. Caught by Snape. Solve caught by Snape. Play all the lessons you want. Oh, there's also a spell that lets you play all the lessons from, uh, from hand, right? I'm catching random things, and all I heard was Pokemon. I said that it's not like you have Rain Dance, so you can't just put all your potions back into play on the same turn. <laughs> like, uh, Blastoise Rain Dance, the uh, old TCG. I'm a Squirtle starter too, though, man. Squirtle, 
for sure. Yeah, man, my, my favorite Pokemon is also Gen 1 because, you know, that's how it works, dude. You f you pick a favorite, and then you don't, like, unfavorite them. Raichu has always been my fave. Love that guy. He never gets enough love, never gets enough attention, dude. Raichu just gets shit on all the time because Pikachu's so popular. And what really bothers me, I'm only going to go on this tangent for two seconds. What really bothers me is in the show when they have Pikachu lose to a Raichu because... Brock's like, oh, Pikachu can learn agility. Raichu is too fat and slow because he evolved. It's not true. Raichu is faster than Pikachu. He evolved, bro. Of course he can learn agility. He's so fast. Nonsense, dude. That Raichu was putting people in the hospital. That Raichu was literally hospitalizing Pokemon. And they're like, oh, Pikachu is fast, dog. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Whatever, dude. It's all right. They had to give it to him. That's the only gym badge. All right, ready? Let this one sink in. It's the only gym badge that Ash won by defeating the gym leader. In Gen 1. Isn't that crazy? By, like, actually just beating them. Even though it was baloney. Every single victory was baloney. But almost every other time, like, Team Rocket or somebody shows up and he saves the day. And they're like, here's the badge as a thank you. It's so ridiculous. That even made me mad as a kid. All right, we're done with the Pokemon tangent. <laughs> I just love Raichu. All right. Sammy's dropping the old Alahasti drought. <sighs> just going to do some damage. Alahasti is good for six to the face. Has that interesting niche effect of being able to get rid of an item, but yeah. Uh, we're we're going to leave the old sock there. I don't think we're investing anything in getting rid of that. He can have it, right? He can have the old sock. That's fine. Halloween Feast, again, man, this uh, card is seeing a lot of action in this matchup. I really like Halloween Feast uh, as an addition to the Spiders deck because you always want to have all the Spiders and the Baby Acromantulas, by their nature of the design of the card, they're going to put all of themselves out together all at once. And so if anybody does anything to kind of reset your board, like Sammy used his Cauldron Calamity, um... It, you're just gonna be SOL when it comes to your little spider engine. So I think Halloween Feast is smart. Go get your spiders back. Have plenty of spiders so that forest spider is cheaper and that you're benefiting fully from Aragog and Aragog's lair. Ah, the giant tarantula. And three babies. It's action one, action two, I'm sure, is going to be to play uh, one of the spiders. Please play the giant tarantula. No. Maybe we just really want to play less than Aragog next turn. Or we still have one baby Acromantula in deck too, but I wouldn't be taking that out of my deck right now. I wouldn't be dealing myself a point of damage for my opponent right now at uh at this low. When I have more Acromantulas in my hand than I will ever have actions to play. Like, really? You know? I don't know that I would uh, opt for that. Also, is this a May? Yeah. I would just be like, no, I'm good. I think all searches are Mays, right? Because you can't prove that they have it in there. Also. So even if it was a mandatory search, he doesn't have to get a uh, baby acromantula from the deck. Uh, looks like we were playing Aragog's Lair. Discard to play. Uh, all right. So let's. Uh, who played whose location? Did we just play this? Because we got to bop the other location. But I can't tell. 
I can't tell what this is doing on the side here. Uh, he moved a card from... Because he took the... He moved this from his discard pile into play. I, or at least that's what it looks like. I don't understand uh, what this layer is doing. But if this location got played, we have to... We have to discard the other location if this is in play. I'm not sure which is what. Or are we healing? Oh, it's a, it's okay. We're sorry. It's part of Palm Free. He's healing with Palm Free. Uh, smart man, remembering to use his Palm Free heal here. I think it's a little too late though for man, because uh, Sammy's firmly ahead in this game. I think. I mean, we have a couple spiders to play down, but it's not like we're playing Steel Claw or even uh, the, whatever the dog one. Man, I don't even remember what it's called. The, the other one where all your creatures attack or something like that. Or, or no, it's, uh, there isn't like that. It's you deal damage equal to the number of creatures you have in play. Sorry, that's what it is. Um, It's not like he's using any of those burn spells. Like, it's just creature damage. Dog Bite, there it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, chat. A plus for Von Eric. Dog bite, yes. I believe it's a six cost care magical creature spell. I could just be totally wrong. Could be pulling that out of my butt. Uh, but he's not doing any kind of instant damage, right? Um, so it's just gonna be like that slow creature damage. I think that he might be just a little too late here to get the creatures, the significant creatures down. Then we had a. Nice, easy time dealing with the first round of spiders. Uh, I don't think he's going to have a tough time burning out the last 28 health here from Donovan. Uh, it's tough. I mean, hey, you know what? You got to you gotta do that stuff. You got to see it, right? When uh, Donovan missed the heal round one and lost because of it, we lost the round. We lost the whole uh, match. Tough, but it's okay. I mean, you'll tell you what, you'll... Uh, You'll start palm free. We've noticed in all these games, the palm free is uh, like mid game. This one was actually a little bit late, but four power. Ah, oh, yeah, that's fair. Can you tell how often I play dog bite? It's just like, why not play steel claw, you know? But with all these spiders on the field, uh, dog bite was starting to look pretty good. Last turn, Donovan had like seven creatures on the board, so that's not that bad. But, yep, I mean, yeah, we're going to play the Forest Spider because he's our biggest, scariest guy, and we can just <laughs> afford him out right now, basically. Um, you know, if we have... We don't have a second one of those to play. Hmm. Oh, we we had to play Care Magical Creatures and then play... Wait, why, why wouldn't we just play a spider and then play the Forest Spider? Uh, are we still trying to get to the 7 for Aragog? Are we, we're, like, that fixated on the Aragog right now? I think we just need to get as many of this guy into play as we can. Yikes. Drive a living death. It's going to be 12 to the face. Uh, if this is a turn, actually this is it, right? 12 to the face and then something else. A 4 so we can do a 6 cost turn. Cauldron Calamity him right here, right? You Cauldron Calamity him for 4-2-4, four, four, and then he draws the last card, and that's game. And dots game. Oh, it's actually time, too, in like one minute. And we see the GG. Oh, Sam, we just had to get uh, <laughs> had to get Chamber of Secrets down just to show that uh, that we're playing this too. So this is kind of interesting. This is uh, that cards can't be played from or leave discard piles. Uh, so if he had played the Chamber of Secrets, it would have stopped the Halloween feast stuff. So that probably got sided in after the first round. But uh, very good game by these guys. Very excellent 
back and forth between spiders and Albus potions. I wonder how the other table is doing. We're going to find out for you guys. Uh, wrap up this round and get ready to bring you round two in just a second. Just going to go let players know that time is called in the round. Well, stay tuned. Okay, guys, pairings are up for round two. Um, so we are going to have to go to one of the two tables that has one of the decks that we just saw. So since we do have a couple of you guys in the chat, uh, does anybody prefer one or the other? Would you like to see another game of spiders? Or would you like to see another game with potions? I don't know what they're playing against yet.
they tied they tied at table two so um i don't know what won either well nothing won All right, well, I think I'm going to watch Sammy's game because we don't have him on as much. And uh, he's doing the potions thing. And then we also have our uh, our other longtime member of the Wizarding Wars here, Morel, playing against him. It'll be interesting to see what they've got on the table tonight. So let's go ahead and jump into that game. Then I need to refresh my... Lovely lo fi. All right. And let's change these names to be accurate. This one's going to be Sammy on top. Versus Morel. Well, oh, these guys are off to the races, so it looks like we have a uh, we have Pomona Sprout on the bottom. So we've got a uh, Charms Creatures deck here. And wouldn't it be funny if this was also a Spider deck? Uh, but it's probably not. <laughs> Sorry, as I say that, I look and remember that Sprout buffs plants. So this is probably going to be a plant creature deck, which uh, I'm sure Sammy is loving because that's one of his favorite archetypes on the other side of the table. Uh, so he's probably just happy to get to see this in action too, play against it. I'm sure actually these guys jam games together, so I'm sure he's seen this before. But uh, nonetheless, so we've got two potions coming down for Sammy. And we've got immediately after the two charms, a umbrella flowers and a guide to household pests coming down for Morel. And hopefully using the, uh, the Arab Slytherin bow truckle creature. Yes, absolutely. I, I imagine we'll be seeing that this round. It'll be cool to see how that works against what Sammy's doing here. Uh, and Sammy's little burn spells. Remember how Aragog's Lair was really strong against Sammy being able to clear the board? Well, we've got a built-in health buff right here with Promona Sprout. And there it is. There it is, Vaughn. The Bow Truckle. The Bow Truckle is a four-cost creature new to the Arab Slytherin Revival set. Uh, when another of your plants deals, or sorry, takes damage, this deals one damage to an opponent of your choice. Uh, and so he does have that one health, quote unquote, but it is three. We have the creatures being buffed and Umbrella Flowers is uh, able to take one damage for you that you are going to take, regardless of what the source of that damage is. So it looks like uh, Alahasti Drought, we're going to use. Uh, we are going to hit him in the face. Of course, that's going to have the Umbrella Flowers take one of the damage. And one of our plants took damage, so that means that we deal one damage to Sammy. And we saw Sammy move Alahasi draw. Oh, sorry. Uh, we saw him draw a card from his deck to the discard, though. Uh, potions lesson. So already there it is. Bow Truckle is uh, is getting in there. Every time Sammy deals one of those damaging spells, Bow Truckle is going to get that free damage. Cobra Lily coming down too, and at the end of each turn, uh, you remove all damage counters from Cobra Lily. Which is nice. We see how the Umbrella Flowers has that persistent one damage counter. Well, Cobra Lily will be dealing with no such thing. Oops, sorry guys. Let me mute my Facebook so you guys don't think you're getting messages. That was me. Uh, 
All right, and Sammy is going to go ahead and just keep dropping these burn spells. The one damage to the face is really um, not so bad. I mean, I know that it can become more damage if we have uh, more bow truckles and more umbrella flowers and stuff like that. But right now, it's certainly not a bad tax. So Sammy wants to blast his way through it while he can before it gets worse. So we're going to go ahead and use dragon poison and we're going to do 10 damage right to the face. Uh, it's only going to be 9 damage to the face. Umbrella flowers is going to take one of the damage. And of course, bro truckle is going to redirect that damage. We saw Sammy move copper cauldron from his main deck to his discard pile. Morel draws for turn. We're up to five lessons. It's Halloween feast. We're going to go ahead and get some from our discard pile. And remember, we talked about this uh, in the earlier round that as his opponent hits him with burn spells, this card just gets better and better. And it turns a hand that didn't have much action into a hand with a lot of playable cards. So we are going to go get Leaping Toadstools and two more Umbrella Flowers. All of these cards can take damage for you that you were going to take. Uh, so leaving toadstools and the umbrella flowers, you want to get all that stuff out on the field so that when Sammy hits him with like a nine damage spell, he splits it across four of his different plants and then bow truckle is dealing all that free damage. Uh, so it's going to kind of be like Sammy is attacking with, uh, with like a, uh, kickback on, you know, recoil damage. We are going to just uh, play a second umbrella flowers. We want to start that reduction right away. Now, these plants, unfortunately, don't do any damage. Only Cobra Lily is doing two damage a turn. So normally we talk about how creatures are putting on pressure, but the plant's creature deck is actually like a real slow burn, uh, healy kind of controlly kind of thing. Um, so again, like I said, Sammy, he knows he just has to keep plowing his way through this. So he's going to deal another 10 to the face. It's going to go down to eight. He's going to take two damage back off of that. Still a very significant amount of damage. Um, these plants shine when it's small amounts of damage and they're splitting them so that they mitigate the damage entirely. Uh, right now, the plants are just kind of slowing it down a tiny bit, but really they've only blocked four damage and uh, four damage is kind of negligible at this point here. As we just took another eight. Oh, a second bow truckle is going to start increasing the damage output of this deck significantly. A third bow truckle. Okay, now we're going to start milking the plants for what they're worth here. Now, Sammy has to be pretty careful about his burn spells because uh, every time he's going to be taking, what is this, two, four, six at least, and increasing amounts when he plays down the next Cobra Lily, or sorry, uh, the next Umbrella Flowers and Leaping Toadstools. But right now, even if he was doing, you know, six damage to you, six to me, six to you, six to me, he still wins that trade by two different spells. I mean, Sammy is up by 12 cards in deck, and that's not insignificant by any means. Uh, you really want to see a healing card come down on Morel's side of the field uh, just to give him a little more longevity here because these the plants are in play and they're going to be dealing a lot of damage over time. Uh, but also only if Sammy is dealing you damage. So I guess this is one of the things I like least about the plants uh, or really anything that's that reactive. Uh, your opponent has a lot of control over how they take the damage from your bow truckle. You know what I mean? What is this? Oh, eat slugs? Really? Oh, that's kind of cute. We eat slugs and we prevent it with the... Um, with the umbrella flowers and then when we prevent eat slugs with the umbrella flowers we trigger bow truckle very creative yay harry potter yeah harry potter trading card game every tuesday what we do We 
No, so this is uh this is really a bow truckle clinic, right? If bow truckle doesn't do what it's supposed to do here, when will it? Now our opponent is hitting us in the face every turn with a burn spell. We have three umbrella flowers and three bow truckles down. I mean, this is uh this is our moment. We're using eat slugs on ourselves. Like this is everything that the plants bow truckle player could dream of. So show us show us the payoff. Make it work. Sammy's in a little bit of a tough spot too now because all of a sudden he has to start thinking about whether or not he wants to hit himself in the face for six every time he casts a spell. Uh, combined with another Cobra Lily or two, that could get real scary really fast. Cobra Lily, remember, is this guy. He's doing two damage a turn. Uh, all the other creatures here. Uh, despite there being so many creatures in play, they're not doing any passive damage like creatures normally do. Uh, Potions Dungeon as a location is coming down here. I'd like to see Greenhouse just totally replace the Potions Dungeon. The location war would be nice. And this is a Cauldron Calamity. We're going to try and just uh, burn out the Bow Truckles here. So uh, Cauldron Calamity can't be prevented by the Umbrella Flowers because this is going to be damage that you are going to take, right? Not that the creatures are going to take. So Cauldron Calamity is just going to be... Uh, you can discard any number of Potion Lessons from play and then deal two damage to opponent or creature for each one. So we're going to go Bow Truckle 1, Bow Truckle 2, Bow Truckle 3. Um, which is actually going to trigger Bow Truckle every time, right? Man, this is about to be a, uh, an interesting stack. And Harry Potter normally doesn't have any kind of stack. Who resolves their effect first? How do these stack? We created a card that creates a stack. Hmm. My interpretation would be um, that he chooses this whole effect. Like, you have to decide what you're going to do first, right? Are we allowed to just stop this effect halfway through? All right, time to go to the rules. All right, guys, give me one second. I'm just reading cards. I always, before I do any kind of ruling, I always just read the cards.
Hey guys, how's it going? Good evening, good evening. We're doing Harry Potter trading card game. I'm about to jump down into a room really quick for a ruling, so I'm gonna mute stream. I apologize, but we'll be back in just one second.
All right, sorry about all that, guys. Yes, it was a very long judge call. Judge calls tend to get long when the judge <laughs> says how something goes and then the people uh, want to discuss it. But uh, that's why at the end of it, I just said we'll discuss more later. But that's how the rule is for now. Uh, basically, uh, are we still having FFTCG locals tomorrow? Yeah, always. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, I didn't post a thing, did I? It's okay, I'll get to it. It's a little bit of a weird week with yesterday being like the holiday and stuff. I didn't even think of yesterday as a Monday, and then today I thought of as a Tuesday, so I like skipped the day where I normally post it. I'll drop it in the Discord in a second. Um, yeah, the, the judge call is weird because in a Harry Potter trading card game, there's like no stack specifically. There is no stack. Uh, and when we try to create new cards for a card game, uh, we want to create fun, exciting cards. So we create cards that inevitably kind of create stacks. Uh, so we just have to sort out how those work a little bit, I think. Basically, uh, for the Final Fantasy Weekly, like, unless I say we're not having it, I'll be here having it. it you should always assume yes, and then I'm just being slow to post uh, registration. Let me just go ahead and... Oh, look at that. Last week I did a late, too. So, <laughs> sorry for the late tag is already in my copy-paste. That's going to be event number 88. What are we doing? We already got Gao. Uh... There we go. Got the old registration is open there for that one. All right, sorry guys. I know I'm still, I'm still like uh, figuring all that out. I'm just letting the so so with these revival cards, uh, I I like to think that I'm very very well versed on the rules for the original five sets of Harry Potter trading card game. Uh, I do not know and have not experienced uh, all the rulings interactions with. It's kind of one of the reasons that we're having these locals is to learn these interactions. Um, Jamming these interactions here just to 
to kind of like figure out how some of these cards work with each other. So we've never even seen a Cauldron Calamity get used against three Bow Truckles before. So I had to go and ask uh, for clarification with the, you know, the big head judge, top dog. So we'll have a, a more complete answer for that going forward. Uh, in the moment, so so what I said was that um, the bow truckle. So so he was choosing to do uh, cauldron calamity was going to be four damage on one bow truckle, four damage on a second bow truckle, and two damage on the third. Okay, uh, the bow truckles have three health. So to simplify that, it's lethal damage on two bow truckles and two damage on one. Uh, when cauldron calamity happens, it's one card effect. So cauldron calamity, you choose how many lessons you're getting rid of then that's an amount of damage that you can assign in multiples of two you choose all your targets and you say how you're splitting the damage um then it starts resolving bow truckle dies bow truckle dies and the third bow truckle who survives i say sees that three plants took damage and he triggers right i said that the two bow truckles that took lethal damage and died didn't see each other take damage they just died they took the damage and died, and they're not on the field to uh, to trigger. But it could be that they saw themselves take lethal damage. They saw each other take damage. I'm not sure. Um, there's nothing in this game that works that way. There's nothing in this game that, like, triggers when it takes damage. There's stuff that, like, takes damage for you. Um... So it's it's I don't know how field effects how field abilities work in this game.
It's funny. So basically, it's like it's the first creature that's ever triggered from something. Like there are no, there's no like creature triggers. There's like, uh, there's like plants that take damage for people, but they're replacement effects. Uh, and there's creatures that like have abilities, but they're all like just weird things that happen like when they enter the field or like at the beginning of a turn. Um, none of them are are like actual triggers. I'm like, I'm literally double checking them all because I was like 99% sure, but I always like to check. But yeah, no, there's not a single character that has a, like a trigger effect. Um, and so this is why, this is, why, this is where people who make rules based on other games gets real weird, right? Because, because the argument is like, some people say, oh no, they definitely see each other trigger because I come from this game where they definitely see each other trigger. And I go, okay, well, I mean, I come from this game where they definitely can't trigger if they're not on the field. So it's like we gotta uh, just gotta get a ruling so that we know going forward. That's all. Did you miss the Mountain Dew review? Dude, you sure did. But I'll tell you what, you're just in time for me to crack open can number two. Because damn, dude. This is delicious. Mountain Dew, Major Melon, Dew, charged with watermelon. Guys, this is, uh... It's really quite incredible. I, I don't even have words for it. It's uh, it's everything you're looking for in a watermelon flavored soda. You know, you expect it to be like the fake Jolly Rancher flavor watermelon, but it's not that at all. It's not that at all. It's a permanent flavor. Is that true? Like, do we know that? Is it is, is it just going to like disappear at the end of the summer or something? It's not even summer, so I guess not. I also like the like vicious looking watermelon on a vine with like the tongue coming out. It is like some crazy stuff. Also just like the the actual military watermelon <laughs> with like lacerations. Everything about it just makes me so happy.
Okay. And uh, now, now I had, <laughs> did Stefan made a ruling for me? And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I just wasn't sure. And then he's like, wait, huh? <laughs> so, I think, I think this is a question that we, uh, we needed to ask. I don't think it, it hasn't come up before. Hadn't been thought of. So huzzah, good for us for thinking about it and getting it covered. And we'll have this ruling question answered for the future of the game, guys. This is what an important, what an important locals we had tonight. How very exciting. We are a witness to history. That's right. Uh, well, you know what the nice thing is, is if we clarify this for this game, then going forward, they can design cards in the same space and it's much more clear how they work. And so they can do, you know, some, some more stuff. So, um, We've got multiple bow truckles here. Oh God, guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I've gotten burpy because I'm drinking all this delicious watermelon Mountain Dew, man. Shout outs to Matt Rice, if he's even still hanging around. I, I wouldn't be if I was him because, you know, the Harry Potter stuff very much not the same, but. Delicious. All right. we have got a bunch of stuff a bunch of craziness happening in this game while we were paying attention to other stuff we've got three basilisk fangs in play uh sammy is just here to start doing some some creature damage uh each of them does two damage when it comes in though so it's kind of helping the the bow truckles do all the their things
All right, man. Well, we didn't do a whole lot of commentary that round, but we sure did a lot of typing and asking about judge questions. Uh, what happened? Oh, Frank, uh, we had a question on uh, Aldrin Calamity versus Bowtruckle, so both revival cards. Uh, Bowtruckle says whenever a creature, whenever a plant takes damage, you can do two damage to something. And a Cauldron Calamity is like you can discard as many potions, lessons as you want from play and do two damage to a creature or... Uh, your opponent for each one you discard and so then the question ends up being like okay well do i like how does this work in a game without a stack right like can i kill the bow truckle and the bow truckle doesn't trigger does a bow truckle trigger when it receives lethal damage uh do they trigger for each instance of two like uh, they're just a bunch of weird questions It's a stack. It's like weird because there's no stack in the game. So it's just a, it's a fundamental stack question uh, on whether or not 
something needs to be on the field for its ability to trigger in Harry Potter. But a question has not ever really mattered. I don't think, I mean, if it does, that's the question that we need to find the answer for. But there's no creature that like triggers. It's a bit weird too, because like these guys are continuing to play. We're not like 100% sure. It's basically up to them, right? I, like I said to Stefan, um, it's it's we can actually use and discuss intention because these guys made the cards. So if it's intended to work when it takes lethal damage itself, then that's it. Uh, we just make sure that the rules work that way. At the very least, guys, we've got a lively discussion.
I just said, good thing we don't play for prizes. <laughs> or I would have to like stop the tournament, like try and call Stefan somehow. How many sets did Wizards of the Coast put out for Harry Potter? There are five sets. The sets are base set, Quidditch Cup, Diagon Alley, Adventures at Hogwarts, and Chamber of Secrets. Ever any fan sets made? Yes, there was one fan set made by the revival team uh, called Air of Slytherin. And actually, right now we're about to uh, round three is coming up in just a second. I'm putting the pairings up. All right, pairings are going up for the last round. Uh, so yeah, there's one, sorry, I got a little distracted typing this up. Uh, there is one revival set that they made called Air of Slytherin. Uh, we op alternate every other week with what format we play. Uh, we do use the classic format, which is only the original five with no ban list and uh, with none of the revival rules.
I always loved the art style for the game. Yeah, one of the coolest things about the old school, uh, the old school game is that it's kind of like pre movies, so it's a lot of like original art and it, it was like one of the movies was kind of happening adjacent at the same time. But it's like it, it's just so early in all the Harry Potter stuff that they really had a lot of unique art and a lot of different uh, interpretations of how characters and locations and things look. Uh, but anyway, so we are playing Revival Format tonight. So Revival Format is the original five sets plus the fan-made set. Um, and we do it with... Uh, they have a mulligan rule, because there is no mulligan rule in the original Harry Potter trading card game. Uh, and they also play with sideboards, which don't exist in the original game. And they have a ban list. They have a ban list of five cards. Uh, from the classic. Is Ginny Weasley, Ron Weasley, Caught by Snape, uh, Fred and George are banned as a starting character, and Dobby's disappearance is restricted to one copy. Most of that probably doesn't mean much to you, but just saying. Just covering my bases. Um, we do have, if you are curious, Classy Badger, the website asio.cards, like, I'm going to type it out for you guys. Um, is like a card database for a Harry Potter trading card game that's made and maintained by some community members. Um, and you can see on there, you can sort by uh, Arab Slytherin. Uh, funny fact, Classy Badger, the Weasleys are all banned because uh, me and my friends, we went to a tournament and played a, a very powerful Ron Weasley deck uh, that kind of just, it, it smashed a little too hard. Um... And the Weasleys, Ron and Ginny, are like super busted. Super busted. Very strong. Yeah, the Weasley hate is real. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny is that the Harry Potter, Harry Potter card is just like not even good. There's like three Harry Potter cards, and they're like the best one is super mediocre. <laughs> he uh, he got the short end of the stick in the card game here. All right, so Jackson is the only character we haven't had uh, on the stream yet tonight. Alright, uh, let's get the game up here. Surprise, Wizards didn't keep going with it. Yeah, so basically, uh, it became a licensing nightmare because, like, ten different people owned different parts of Harry Potter. And also, um, J.K. Rowling is notoriously difficult to work with. Like, real difficult to work with. Like a real, real bitch. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I can understand that after a while, maybe it just, it became too much of a headache. But one of the interesting things about the card game is it actually was doing very well. Like, I mean, Harry Potter was booming in popularity. Like, this card game died in 2001, remember? So it's like, um... Or 2001, 2002, somewhere around there. So Harry Potter was getting huge. I mean, we weren't even close to peak Potter fandom yet. Right? We weren't even done the story. We weren't even close. Um, and 
you know, the movies were just starting to pop off. So, like, Warner Brothers was getting their fingers in there with the licenses. They had all these different artists. I mean, in Wizards of the Coast, um, Wizards of the Coast uh, tried to kill almost all of their card games. Remember, guys, that in the early 2000s, Wizards of the Coast tried to kill the Pokemon trading card game. Never forget. And the only reason that the Pokemon trading card game is still around is because Nintendo took the license back. Uh, they just wanted to simplify at some point, I think. They were just like, they were focusing on magic and uh, that was making a lot of money for them. It worked out. So they, they kind of were just uh, walking back a couple card games. She's the most popular person. Well, you know what? The thing is, uh, she was always like that difficult. It's just that now she's difficult about, you know, she's choosing the wrong battles and uh, people are sick of her shit. I doubt they would have let them keep using the non-film art style anyway. That's probably true, too. The books continued to use non-film art style, though, so it's like, it depends. Yeah, again, though, that's all, it's so much of a headache to even think about, so I'm not surprised at all that they kind of went away from that. But, um, did Watsy try to kill it? Uh, yeah, yeah, Watsy, like, actively stopped supporting it, and it was doing so poorly that Nintendo took it back to, like, revive it. Like, people actually thought it wouldn't be a thing. Like, that there wouldn't be uh, events anymore. They just, like, uh, they stopped funding, like, anything. Like, there just weren't events. There was no, like, worlds. <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, it got rough. It's like you say, you know, it's like I say try to kill it, but as much as a company can with a, a product that's has such a successful IP, right? Like, like just you, you stop actively trying and, uh, and you just kind of let it go and figure, you know, it is what it is. Uh, silver cauldron coming down. Nice. This is a, how often do you get to see the silver cauldron? Silver cauldron comes down and bounces two lessons to put five potion power in. Self-stirring, we were talking about earlier, being the best cauldron. Uh, man, this guy is so opened himself up to item hate. Actually, Sammy does have the uh, the seven cost spell that can bounce and can like get rid of an item. And if he gets rid of this silver cauldron, he'll actually be doing a lot of damage to uh, the, uh Parker here. I keep wanting to call him Jackson. This is his last name. I guess when you have your flagship, uh, that's why you spoil the. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I mean, hey, they're doing pretty good on. Just wizard or just uh, magic now, huh? Worked out for him, okay. Uh, but the nice thing about it for us is that the Harry Potter trading card game is a well-made game that has like great art assets and um, you know it has a, a passionate fan base. And now we get to a point in 2020, 2021, where I mean we're able to have like weekly regular events. I was just saying to the, to the guys in the event today. Uh, when we started the stream in the player meeting, I said, do you guys realize how cool it is that for the first time in like 20 years, not really, you know, close to, yeah, basically for the first time in 20 years, like people are playing Harry Potter weekly again. Like we're definitely the only place in the world where weekly there is a Harry Potter tournament being hosted. <laughs> it's just like, uh, keeping it alive, you know? Well, you guys know I do all the stuff for Final Fantasy trading card game. Uh, and my friends and I are passionate about this game and we love, uh, we love breaking old card games. So we made the Ron deck and showed up and, and then we decided rather than just, uh, show up with the Ron deck and, and ruin everybody's fun time. And, you know, that was it. We decided we'd stick around and kind of, uh, help, you know, uh, bolster the community, you know, give them some content, start hosting events for them, stream some stuff, share some deck lists. Has there ever been talks of making more fan sets? Uh, yeah, so so the Revival team, uh, and you can check out the Revival site at harrypottertcg.com. Uh, the Revival team are making a couple of the fan sets. Uh, this was the first one they made. So this was only... Uh, this is a very recent thing. The fan set came out last year. Yep, Classy Better, I know. You play in my Final Fantasy Thirties. I know there's like some other people. I was just kind of talking to... Uh, what, like all five of you out here tonight or something like that? Um, yeah, they are working on the Prisoner of Azkaban set. Yes, Heir of Slytherin. With Heir of Slytherin, they wrapped up the second book. So now they're working on uh, 
the next fan set will be Prisoner of Azkaban. But like I said, Arab Slytherin came out like uh like July, I wanna say, last year. So um yeah, it was a pretty recent thing. Like it just came out. Ah, working on the first set now. Look at that. Right back to work. Playing my FF tourneys. Appreciate that, that you guys are stopping by to watch uh, the Harry Potter tourneys, you know? Try to spread some of the love that we've established over in Final Fantasy. I mean, you know, that's the thing is, is we've had to do these digital tournaments for so long. I just got good enough at doing the digital tournaments. They might as well just use that to help other games, um, you know, survive in quarantine too. May have to look into it. Well, hey, there you go. I'll tell you what, if you're interested, uh, here we're here every Tuesday. You know, we've got a Discord full of people who are happy to, to chat with you. And, and the nice thing about this game is there's literally no reason to get into it in person, like physically. Like, you don't even have to worry about it. Just, just play the digital, because there's, you know, digital sets being added, like fan sets. So you'll never own all the cards. So you might as you know, just casually play. There's only six sets, pretty easy. Things aren't going to be changing too fast, <laughs> you know. It's okay, we allow ridiculous jokes. All Harry Potter puns and jokes are more than welcome in stream chat during Harry Potter night. Music, dude, what? Play. Free online TCG, yeah, nothing wrong with that, right? If it's for free, it's for me. Uh, yeah, like I said, you can check out uh, ASIO.cards to just kind of like leaf through some of the cards. If you're interested in uh, checking out what the Revival team has been doing for the game so far, you can check HarryPotterTCG.com. If you're interested in uh, what I and my friends, my team is doing for the Harry Potter trading card game, you want to read some competitive articles, you want to see some deck techs, um, some card of the week stuff, you can check out DarkMarkTCG.com. I'm going to drop all the links in chat actually for you. Uh. Bookmark those three websites at least. You're on your way. All right, let's actually talk a bit about the game here, huh? So, <clears throat> looks like Parker has been playing creatures and potions. He wants to do burn damage from both hitting you in the face and from hitting you with spells. Looks like we've got the uh, the big spell combo here for potions. The item combo, sorry, is the bulge eye. Uh, you get this card, beetle eyes. And if you have beetle eyes and eel eyes out, you can go and get bulge eye potion from your deck and you can put it into play. Uh, and then, of course, the Bulge Eye Potion, you can discard to do a bunch of damage to them. Moon Seed Potion, you can discard to do a bunch of damage to them. And the starting character that Parker's playing is Draco Malfoy Slytherin, which, when you play an item, gives you back the action for turn. So that's why he's playing such a heavy item list. Uh, Draco is really good with cards like Self-Stirring Cauldron, right? Because you get back the action from Self-Stirring Cauldron, and Draco gives you an action, so it's actually plus one. Oh, and through the arch we're going to be playing here. That stops our opponent from using any spell cards. That's actually really going to mess up Dumbledore's game plan here because all of his damage is spell cards. All of it. Um, and to solve, our opponent's going to have to skip four actions. And so as we see right there, the two goes on to the adventure. And Alba's Dumbledore is going to go ahead and just skip both of his actions this turn uh, in order to dump those into through the arch. Does anyone else hate Ravenclaws? Whoa! <laughs> Me. I'm just like, whoa, we're throwing shade in chat. There's seven cards left in Jackson's deck. Parker's deck, my bad. Uh, looks like we're going to be using Burning Bitterroot Bomb to put ten cards back into the deck. This is a nice healing card, really efficient healing card. He uh, had to play a potions lesson and then get rid of it because <laughs> all of our potions lessons are coming from uh, the cauldrons here. That is one drawback to having cauldrons providing all of our potion lessons. 
Uh, look at this though, huh? I mean, we are literally at 12. We're at 12 lessons. Oh, quasi. Oh no. I don't even know what I, I've never took the thing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be. It doesn't matter. I'm a Death Eater. What are they? I'm a Dark Mark. I guess they all started as houses too, huh? Now, they're probably mostly Slytherin, but that can't be, right? It can't just be that, uh, that black and white. I guess it kind of is in the Harry Potter world, huh? So we're putting a bunch of cards. We're healing 10 cards back into our deck. Uh, and we kind of are buying a little bit of time between the burning Bitterroot Bomb and Through the Arch. So remember, Through the Arch Adventure, it's in play here, um, is preventing Sammy from playing any spell cards. And that's how Sammy is trying to win the game. He has all these big spell cards that just burn and do some damage. Uh, this Manticore is out here just doing two damage a turn. And that two damage a turn is, is, uh, gonna start to add up as we take away the spells from him and keep him under the... Ugh. Underneath the same number of cards that we have, but all Sammy has to do is, uh, be able to sneak one burn spell in there and, and he could probably end this. What's his biggest spell, right? It's 12, I think. But he can't do the 12 cost, uh, or the, the 12 damage, because it's an 8 cost. He can only do 7 cost things right now. Looks like we're going to just spend this turn completing through the arch. Uh, the reward on that, of course, is that your opponent may put an item card from his or her discard pile into their hand. So we're probably going to go ahead and uh, actually do that, right? Yeah, we're going to put Holidays with Hags back into our hand, which lets us kind of um, fill up these these lessons a little bit more. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What is the hang up here, team? <clears throat> there we go, okay. I was like, uh, everything was paused. We hadn't taken any actions in a while. Uh, all right, so it looks like we're gonna draw. We're gonna play Alahasti Drought from Parker here. Alahasti Drought is going to deal 6 damage, or we can discard the Cauldron. Uh, I think it's just going to be 6 to the face. It sure is. And that's half of his health. Do we have another Alahasti in hand? Oh no, we draw a card and skip. Oh no. Oh no. Alright, Sammy gets his lesson down. Now he can get to 8. Does he have uh, anything that's big enough? Probably not. Is he just going to hit for 12 and hope? Yep, 12 and pray, baby. 12 and pray. The old 12 damage and prey. So Drought of Living Death is going to do... Uh, sorry, Draft of Living Death. It's going to do 12 damage to Jackson. Puts him down to 3, which actually puts him down to 2 health because he's going to draw a card for turn. Uh, Jackson, this is it. This is the turn. Uh, I hope you have another burn or something. The Manticore is not enough by itself. Uh, you're wondering, where, like, where is another creature, man? I mean, we've got a couple of the Venomous Tentacula. 
There's a there's some in here, but man, if one other creature any other turn would have really helped him out here. And it looks like we're gonna use an action to draw a card, and unless that was the card we needed, uh, we're scooping and going to the next game here, guys. Man, what a close one. I mean, he can't use another action to draw, right? He has to just lose. Oh, no. Oh, no. He had Moonseed. That's it. He got there. He drew, and it was Moonseed Poison. Uh, so he plays his card and does three damage to the opponent and gets an action back. But that doesn't even matter because the three damage is going to be it. Nice. Moonseed Poison is, uh, is going to do it here, and Parker's going to take that game. So that was a close one for these guys. Now the players are given the opportunity to sideboard if they so desire. Um, you got to wonder what the players are going to put in to, to try and improve their chances here. Uh, I imagine Sammy is looking for um, just, a, just you know, some more of those low burn spells so that he can take out the creatures. The Manticore is a 2 damage, 4 health creature. Actually, it looks like a lot of what Jax is playing are small damage, larger health, mid-range creatures. So, I don't know that the uh, the Basilisk Fangs that Sammy was sideboarding in before are really going to be as much use to us here. We might just opt for um, keeping it pretty similar to the last game and, and just try to play a little bit of a tighter game. I can't tell if either player is even siding here. I don't think it looks like it said they changed cards. Uh, give me one second here, guys. I'm going to put on a hoodie. It's a little chilly. All right, Ooh, my hoodie is on. We are warm. We are ready to go. We've got our watermelon Mountain Dew, and we are ready. Okay, both players deciding if they want to keep their opening hand, as Revival does have the mulligan rule added.
Man, this is such a uh, slow fare game so far. So, of course, it's a uh, lesson, 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 Eli's lesson, which is a nice combo turn for Draco. So, remember, Draco gives you that extra action when you play an item. So, they played potions. Then they played eel eyes, um, which lets them, of course, look at the opponent's hand, um, which is kind of cool. You just get that little knowledge. Uh, then the eel eyes refunds the action for them. And then they use the next action to play care of magical creatures. Sammy's turn, he drops a potion and uses an action to draw a card. Not the best sign. Parker says on his next turn, he's just going to play two more lessons. Um, Sammy says the same. Now these guys are pretty even here. Uh, four to five. Five to five, lesson-wise. And now we're going to start slinging spells. Spells and creatures. So... This is going to be Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, one of the series of books from Diagon Alley that allows you to discard the card for an action and draw three cards. Kind of gives you a, a little refill on your hand there. There aren't a ton of cards in Harry Potter that help you draw cards, uh, but obviously drawing cards is good in every card game. Always, always a good move. So the ones that do are strong. Unicorn coming down here is a rough... That is a rough card scan of Unicorn. Let's see if we can help them out with that. Uh, but Unicorn, to play this card, you discard one of your Paramagical Creatures Lessons from play, and you get one more action on each of your turns, uh, which is wonderful. Action economy, action advantage is powerful. is very, very strong. And usually the player who has more actions to spend wins the game. So for those of you guys who either haven't played Harry Potter or haven't played in a long time, a quick refresher that every turn you get two actions to use every turn. Uh, you may use actions to do the following things. You may use an action to play a lesson card. You may use an action to play an item, a location, or a spell card. You may use an action to play a creature. You may use two actions to play a character or two actions to play an adventure. And you could always use an action to draw a card. You draw one card at the beginning of every turn. Some cards will have uh, abilities on them where you may use an action to do something like this book. You can use an action to discard it and draw three cards. But every turn you only get two actions, which is why anything that gives you more or refunds them. So Draco Malfoy is when you play an item, you get an action back. Right, so that's basically a refund. Um, Unicorn gives you an action every turn, extra in addition to the two you have. So that's like a little engine there. And you can already see why those cards are so good. It's like if you and I are racing uh, to the other side of a room and we have to take turns walking in just a couple steps at a time. But I can take three steps and you can take two steps. Like, who's going to get to the other side of the room faster? Probably me. Oh, Parker's playing Norwegian Ridgeback, baby. That's a big old dragon. A nearly headless Nyx in there too. To mess with all those items. All right, so now we have our eel eyes and our beetle eyes. So we just played it, but beetle eyes is going to deal four damage to the opponent. Uh, it looks like it was just four potions lessons for Sammy there. Um, and then of course, since we have both eel eyes and beetle eyes, we uh, can use an action to discard this card and eel eyes, and then we go and get that bulge eye potion and put it into play. Uh, we're just going to do a bunch of damage to our opponent and a nicely timed through the arch coming down to say that Sammy cannot play spell cards uh, right when he kind of gets to that four lesson.
Salazar Slytherin did nothing wrong, dude. He just wanted to... He just wanted to be clean, dude. That's all. Chamber of Secrets. Naturally, the school had been searched for evidence of such a chamber. It does not exist, says Professor Bins. What an idiot. How wrong they were. Professor, right? Professor something, I can't read. You're in a giant magical castle and you're just going to say definitively that something doesn't exist. Give me a break. Looks like we're doing the uh, the thing. Yeah, we got our boulder eye potion into play. We use the action to deal 13. 13 damage to Sammy. Hitting a lot of those big damage potion spells. Drought of Living Death, Alahosti, Fatiguing Potion, Malevolent Mixture. All going right into the trash. As we get another Tawny Owl. And Tawny Owl actually is kind of cool because it lets us put... Uh, the healing I uh, the items non healing items sorry back into our hand um so we've got doxy doing two damage to the creature we've got unicorn unicorn is just a uh a big battery it doesn't do any damage which is weird right it should do like one it should be like a one six it should be like a uh, headwake doxy is a two one here Copper Cauldron coming down from Sammy. And Sammy is, uh, he's having a little bit of a tough time here. He's kind of deciding uh, whether or not he wants to solve through the arch or build before he solves it. So he's going the build route here. He's not going to sink his actions into through the arch just yet. Going to build another potion. Going to you know make sure he's ready when he does get out of through the arch that he just starts popping off. The last thing you want to do is just solve through the arch by skipping your next turn, and then he plays another through the arch, right? So I almost would have liked if we had just played a lesson and invested one action into through the arch, because you want to put an odd number on this. You want to solve this with what action left so that you can make the most out of that action, right? Um, you definitely don't want to line it up in such a way that your opponent just gets to relock you instantly before you get to do anything. Which is how we've lined it up here. If we, uh, if we put two more into this, I mean. Now, it, he hasn't, you know, messed up or anything like that yet. But he could, uh, I think, have maybe put one action into Through the Arch. If we intend to solve it. If we have another plan for this card, then hey, by all means. Uh, Apothecary... Looks like we are trading two cards from our hand for a potion card of choice from deck.
<clears throat> so we are basilisk fanging, which is a nice way to clean up the doxy. Kind of ironic because doxy comes in and deals two damage to a creature and getting a little taste of its own medicine. I do love that uh, the Basilisk Fang and the Chamber of Secrets are here together. I wish there was some kind of like combo, like like you have Tom Riddle, you have Chamber of Secrets, you have the Basilisk Fang, you play the Basilisk. Is there a fifth card? Is there, a, can we, uh, do we Exodia? And I guess Tom Riddle's Diary, right? Separate from the Basilisk Fang. And that's it. And then the, the Serpent purges your opponent's board and uh, you win the game. <laughs> what would the Exodia combo in, in uh, Harry Potter have to be? Would it be the Deathly Hollows? That would make sense, right? If they were like, uh, if like getting all three Deathly Hollows into play could be a win condition, that could be kind of cool, right? Uh, assemble all seven Horcruxes. What do we have? Come on, need a little action. We got the Tawny and the Cauldron Shop. And this is kind of interesting. We can talk about Cauldron Shop for a second. Um, so A, the location wars are always fun. He played this and he bounced the uh, Chamber of Secrets right up on out of there. Cauldron Shop, of course, is a location that is, um, if you ever, each player may use an action to search the deck uh, for an item, I believe it is, an item card. From it. Yep, an item card that needs potions, power, and put it in your hand. So you can go ahead and get all the different pieces for your Bulgeye potion. You can get the different cauldrons, etc., etc. Uh, this is kind of gross. I don't know that I would have played this. Uh, my opponent now has a whole lot of cards that he can search his deck for. Maybe we did this because uh, our opponent just has so many cards in hand, we assume they already have what they want to play. Uh, or, or we need certain pieces so bad. Uh, I don't think that we were really pulling that many things from our discard pile, so I don't know that we needed to get rid of um, Chamber of Secrets. You know, I don't think that that was the driving force behind Cauldron Shop. Um, did we just search for... Uh, we searched for self-stirring with Cauldron Shop. Okay. Not bad. You want a plus one, of course. It is kind of cool because like searching for call uh, self stirring cauldron and then playing it if you have Draco with cauldron shop out is uh, is neutral. So it's not like you wasted the action searching. I still would rather plus than just go neutral, but you know it's not the worst thing. 
Silver Cauldron coming down. Silver Cauldron is going to bounce these last two lessons here. And now we are up to 10. Uh, again, I, being really, really greedy with these cauldrons. Um, if our opponent ever, you know, does the thing. Oh, did he not have enough to... Eight. Wait. Oh, uh, he didn't have enough before. He had, he only had two down, and he had the self stirring cauldron. Uh, sorry, he had two potions lessons down and a care magical creature. So he's at seven total. So Sammy was like, "Hey, uh, you couldn't afford that." So I think it looks like he played a potion from hand to be like, "Oh, look, I could," uh, and then uh, plays the silver cauldron. This extra action, these two extra actions that Parker's able to generate every turn are really helping him keep up with what Sammy's trying to do here. And Sammy is getting to just enough potions and such that he might be able to squeak this one out. Uh, you know, Parker's in a weird spot where he really doesn't have, doesn't have too much in play. Uh, Sammy was able to play Alahosti Drought and get rid of this cauldron. Like we said, the... The cauldrons were a little bit greedy. Uh, so when we get rid of the silver cauldron now, all of a sudden, you know, he only has five lessons. He has to play this uh, this book. And, uh, man, I don't know. I, I think we're in a little bit of a tough spot here. I think Parker might have uh, played right into that removal to the point where he doesn't have any kind of burn. He's not able to finish this off um, with a moon seed or with Bulgeye. And Sammy... Uh, could very easily have two different burn spells in hand for next turn. I mean, Sammy's up to six, so he can play eight costs. So if he has a, you know, if he has a draft of living death and then um, just a, a, you know, a cauldron calamity, it's over. Draft of living death and Alahosti, draft of living death and, um, you know, like dragon seed, po like all the different, there's like a million different poisons <laughs> and they'll all do it. Uh, you know, you follow up with pretty much anything. It needs the one-two punch here. Better yet, Jackson's gone and uh, used two actions to draw cards. So, he's down to 12. So, we can just one-shot him with, uh, with the old card there. We're just talking a bit about uh, how things resolve differently in different games, and you can't really compare things one to one, right? So Stefan was saying to me, um, in Final Fantasy, how would something like Bow Truckle work? And I said, well, that's a very complicated question. It doesn't really work that way. It's not like a one to one like that. 
Um, but I said in Final Fantasy, if something has an effect that triggers when it takes a certain amount of damage, if that thing has died, uh, it can't trigger that because it's dead before it sees how much damage was done to it. However, if something triggers whenever it takes damage, not a certain amount, like it does trigger, it's just like this whole, it's way too complicated. Final Fantasy has the abilities categorized into four different kinds of abilities. And, and so it's like, you know, I can't even answer it as a blanket statement. It's like, well, it depends on what kind of ability they make it, right? If it's a field ability, it doesn't even use the stack. Uh, in Harry Potter, there is no stack. So it's just, you know, you can't compare that stuff. It gets, re it gets really weird really fast. And yeah, it looks like Sammy has it. You know, Sammy just hits him with the all bop, bop, burn, burn. And now we go to game three. All right, give them the old uh, 10 minute warning essentially, but it's the eight minute warning. They've got eight minutes uh, to wrap this game up. And these guys are, are probably not gonna have a full eight minute game. <laughs> but we'll see. Gotta, gotta play fast. Uh, so it is one one here. So what I would do if I was these guys is at the end of it, uh, if we could tell which way it was gonna go, I'd just give it to the other guy. But again, uh, we don't prize out here for Harry Potter. This is just like coming out to Friday Night Magic. Just like a little locals thing. Uh, these guys don't have to pay to play, you know, so um, no cost, no no reward kind of deal. Uh, Parker, go ahead and uh, looks like he's putting Quarrel in. I love that Quarrel is in his sideboard. Uh, Quarrel to return all items to their owner's hands. Uh, and creatures, but, you know, Sammy's not going to be playing. Actually, if anything, Parker is going to be returning quite a bit of his own things to his hand if he doesn't play this carefully. Um, it's it's interesting to see Quarrel on the side of the field that has the most creatures and items. Sammy does have the tendency to get a couple items into play, but nothing that is... I don't know, it depends, but nothing that's worth quarreling. Uh, certainly not when we telegraph it like this. Right now, Sammy knows the threat of quarrels right here, so he's not going to lean too hard into the, uh, into the, like, cauldrons and stuff. Uh, nearly Headless Nick coming down. <laughs> this guy's flipped the other way, it's so weird. Uh, alright, Nearly Headless Nick, once per game you can search your deck, uh, for two item cards. So... That's nice because it doesn't require an action. Uh, actually, it looks like he's using it right now. He's using it right now. Looking for a card in main deck, so I sure hope he's using it right now. Tap that nearly headless Nick. He's got the bold eyes, or the eel eyes, rather. Eel eyes and. A book, the the creature book. Guide to household pets, that's what it's called. Wait, is it guide to household pets or guide to household pests? I'm actually not sure. I want to say pets, but it could be pests, right? Probably pets. Uh, I'll go with my memory, my gut. Eel Eyes, Eel Eyes coming down. Remember, Eel Eyes just has uh, Sammy reveal his hand to Jackson, although that can be vital, valuable information. I do like how uh, Eel Eyes is a card that looks at the opponent's hand, and it's literally just a jar of eyes, and that's what it's doing, is, is looking. You think it's pests? It probably is. Pests makes more sense. We'll see when the card comes down. 
I mean, we could ASIO it, but I'd rather live on the edge here. Don't look it up. Don't break my heart. Damn, you know what? I, the more I think about it, it's definitely pests, right? Doesn't it have a uh, like a gnome ripping a page out of the book? Uh, like like a troll garden gnome just like going to town on the book. It totally is. Uh, it totally is. Wait, am I thinking of a different book? Because the one that he just got is the one with the lizard, right? has like a lizard on it oh no oh uh, the the one with the lizard is uh is fantastic beasts and where to find them that's right and and pests is the one with the garden gnome on it mm -hmm, yeah yep fantastic beasts and where to find them I didn't even have the right card name, guys, but it is Vaughn's right. Vaughn, you get uh, 10 brownie points. I don't know what those are redeemable for yet, but you get 10 brownie points um, for getting the name of the other card right. It is Pests. I would make a joke about uh, putting that stuff up on the prize wall. But we actually have a prize wall in the Final Fantasy Discord, so I gotta be careful what I say there. Redeemable for brownies, I hope. Uh, you don't want me to make them, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm not very good at making brownies. Or at least not making brownies that taste good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I make brownies with a with a purpose sometimes, but you know, they're not anything I would, uh, I would submit to any kind of contest. Or, you know, try to earn any points for. Those are more a means to an end, you know what I mean? Venomous Tentacula, very much not Venomous Tentacula Juice comes into play here. Uh, and I will point out something fun that I'm sure some of you guys already know. I know uh, I know at least two of you in chat already know this. But uh, Venomous Tentacula, the, this card, the 9-drop potions card, should definitely be Venomous Tentacula Juice. Because it is the juice of this plant. But instead, it's venomous tentacular juice. Like, it's an adjective. Oh, it's venomous tentacular, dude. But, card is canon. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, card is canon. It's venomous tentacular juice. <laughs> the wrong, you're using the wrong canon there, man. That's like the card is, we can shoot it out of a cannon. Uh, man, how is the one card so nuts? And this guy... Turns out, uh, no wonder they juice the plant, right? Because alive, this plant isn't worth anything, dude. You may use an action and discard this card to put a potion lesson from your discard pile into play. That is insane. Like, why? Hmm. Hmm. At the very least, uh, I like the book that he's that uh, Sammy's playing a little better. I know that the book is a revival card, but still. Parker has access to the revival cards as well. I love that Parker's playing a couple characters here for utility, though. That makes me happy. Bruise Wart Bomb as well. We've got two different. We have a uh, he has Bitterwood Bitterwart Bomb. Whatever bruising bitter blah, 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 triple B. He's got the triple B and the Bruise War Bomb. All the healing cards. Bitter Root Bomb. Mm. 
Man, uh, yeah. this quarrel sure is uh, two wasted actions, huh? Look at this table, man. We would, we are certainly not going to use him. Uh, we're going to be resetting our own all our own cards. Sammy sees that quarrel too, like we talked about. I mean, it's so telegraphed being played on turn one that Sammy's not going to ever put himself in a position where it's better for Parker to use quarrel on Sammy than, uh, than to just leave him there. You got a whole free turn out of him. Looks like Alahasti Drought is going to get played, and that's going to be... He only moved one card, should be a lot more than that. Should be six. There it is. Takes another five. Looks like we're going to Dragon Poison. Dragon Poison is going to be another 10. Right? Is it, is it 8, 9, or 10? One of those numbers. 10, yeah. Okay. I shouldn't second guess myself. So he's going to do 10 damage to Jax's face, and uh, that's his last action there. See... Uh, I think that Sammy, if Sammy just had a little bit of action economy, if he was generating any action advantage at all, he would be taking these games here because uh, that's what Parker is able to just do so much more over the course of the game uh, that he's able to literally throw away two actions and an entire turn on Professor Quirrell and still be so ahead on actions for the whole game that he, uh, he can really put the screws to Sammy. The difference is uh, he's not doing enough with all those actions. He's not doing enough damage. I mean, so yeah, he he got rid of those two things. He put Bulldry in. Uh, Bulldry, of course. Oh, uh, playing that item is gonna plus one action back. But uh, you had to use an action to discard these anyway, so it kind of ends up being neutral thanks to Draco. No unicorn out this game, which means we only have two actions to use this turn. Uh, it looks like we are going to use Bulldry Potion, so that's going to be 13 from Sammy's deck. Uh, oh, Hagrid needs help. Oh, Hagrid, he needs so much help. Oh, boy. Oh, bother. What a good card. What a good card. He needs so much help. Just look at him. Look at how depressed he is. Got a red nose, like he's been crying all day. He's just been blowing his nose. Looks like malevolent mixture. I love this. It's a potion with legs. A malevolent mixture is going to be coming down for Sammy here, which is uh, two potion lessons for ten damage to the face, and that's got to be game on table right there. Uh, I definitely let this go uh a little long but oh well they finished their game and uh you know nobody was hurt all right uh We'll go ahead and get all these results in. All right, guys, so that is going to be results for round three. New Hearthstone mini set. All cards have been revealed. Ooh, I'm going to have to peek at those right after this. Uh, but some notes for this week. We could talk about the four decks that we saw this week. Uh, we saw a Albus Dumbledore Potions Master deck that was using all seven plus cost potions kill cards. Uh, really neat. Uh, using a little bit of potion. Uh, Cauldron Acceleration. Taking advantage of new cards such as Cauldron Calamity. Um, Chamber of Secrets. Uh, the Basilisk Fang. We had a lot of cool new potion cards getting played here. Um, 
We had Parker playing a Malfoy potions less creatures deck with a lot of extra action advantage, seeing things like Venomous Tentacula, seeing things like Unicorn, uh, among other, like the Bulgeye item combo. That's some cool stuff. We look at what we had of the other decks. We had um, the plant, Pomona Sprout plant deck with the bow truckles and all the flowers and stuff, taking damage for them. And then we had the Charms creature deck, which was doing spider stuff. So very, very cool to see those four different decks coming around this week. And oh, I don't have, I actually don't have an alert box on right now because the alert box is all Final Fantasy sounds. But we got a prime sub from Frank in chat. Thank you very much, Frank. Appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Keep us all, uh, keep us going, right? We're going to have to put the chat in sub mode a couple times just so you can feel like a king. But, uh, oh, actually, it looks like there's a couple, we got a couple guys that I missed. Uh, also want to thank Wicked 207 and Trapersky for following appreciate that guys thank you they followed at some point today yeah yeah you've got you've got all the ex bursts you've got the uh chris champ they took away the pog champ face but we've got chris champ still uh you get uh the ghost rip you get the 777 to post if somebody looks like they're doing uh, like a gambler play and then we have a the foreman galloway bob the builder they're all final fantasy emotes love to see if we can sneak a harry potter emote onto there uh, but that's it guys. So we had, uh, I believe Sammy taking it this week. Let's, let's, let's just take a peek at my final results page here. Oh, actually it might go to, uh, if Morel takes it at that table, he'll have, uh, he'll have two wins and a draw. No wrong with that. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's see what they're doing over there. While we're at it, right? Why not? Oh, they just wrapped it up. 2-1, he says. All right, actually, so I think Morel takes it this week. Uh. All right, yeah, it's gonna put Morel at number one this week. Congratulations, taking it with a cool uh, that plants deck. We have Sammy coming in second place with uh, again, like we said, the the Albus deck, and we have spiders and draco items are the other two decks represented this week so i love that uh it seems like every week we have new decks this is pretty cool i mean i know this won't last forever but i'm really enjoying kind of exploring all these different archetypes over the weeks with you guys um but that's it for us this week we will be back tomorrow night if you're interested in final fantasy tcg i know i've got some of my diehard tcg uh fans in chat who play final fantasy with us on wednesdays Please come on by. Uh, you know, it's, it's another great card game. It's still live, so there's a lot of sets being made, and, you know, we're having a good time with that every Wednesday night. Otherwise, we will be back here, same channel, same place, 7 o'clock next Tuesday for a classic format event, original five sets. So come on by, come play if you're interested. Uh, check out harrypottertcg.com, join the revival. Check out darkmarktcg.com, read up a little bit, pick a deck list to play. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting stuff going on guys. So we appreciate you hanging out with us, spending your Tuesday night tuned in and just watching a little Harry Potter action. And we will catch you next time. Toodaloo.